There is universal freedom, freedom within the expanse of the heart essence. So you would think that uh, in America, they really love freedom, right? They would, they would really love this text, actually. A lot of freedom. So, but that's actually what, what motivated me to free my mind is that if you're talking about true freedom, true liberation, um, then wouldn't it really start with our minds being free rather than them being tied to uh, the sense world? I think so. So I need the scrolling because I have a few things going on there. So there's freedom as utter lucidity, freedom within the expanse of the sun and moon. There is freedom as the true nature of phenomena, freedom within the expanse of space. There is freedom of objects in the phenomenal world, freedom within the expanse of the ocean. There is unchanging freedom, freedom within the expanse of the most majestic mountain. There is primordial freedom, Freedom in the unborn expanse. There is freedom in a single state of evenness. Freedom in the expanse of timeless awakening. There is total freedom. Freedom in the timelessly unfolding expanse. This is the twelfth section of the precious treasury of the basic space of phenomena. Demonstrating that all phenomena are by nature timelessly free and awakened mind. If through the key point of effortlessness there is familiarity with the very essence of enlightenment, the spontaneous presence of phenomena, although Buddhahood is timeless, there is awakening to Buddhahood anew. All right, that's probably one of my favorite long tempo lines i know i have a lot of them but um this tells you so much if you can begin to embrace effortlessness that means letting your experience be and learning to just uh, let life be back off a little but it also says effortlessness means there's familiarity with the very essence of enlightenment. Like I always say, to normalize enlightenment, we begin to get used to enlightenment. How else could it be? If we always talk about enlightenment as, as though it was some mystical far off thing that nobody can really reach, then what's the point of all this? And I think Long Chimpa and many others realize that. And so they want us to familiarize with complete freedom. And we want to share that, you know, and embrace it. We don't want to keep it such a, a dark hidden secret. This that would be like hiding water from everybody to me. You know, everybody should have awareness. Everybody should have clear light spaciousness of their mind. It should be like, having a, a shirt no. so and, and yeah it makes also a key point here that although everything is is kind of pure consciousness uh, it seems like there's awakening to it anew because you were turned away from it in a way uh, it was kind of distorted and then for whatever reason, you know, who knows the reason, I think if I was to guess, we're born into uh, wisdom. Many beings are born into wisdom. And it's just the way that it goes. We're like a, a bunch of chicken eggs hatching. <laughs> many, many chicken eggs. <laughs> So, yeah, that's what also what it tells you there is that's why it's called self-knowing awareness. 
it, it's cognition recognizing itself, recognizing itself. So we kind of use this local experience to recognize and familiarize something non-local, non-referential. So they say like water being poured into water. Okay, yeah, I like that stanza. Has a it's pretty packed with wisdom. So this is the unsurpassable pinnacle pinnacle of the Vajra heart essence, the vast expanse of enlightenment, the very essence of the nine progressive approaches. Although the orbs of the sun and moon are radiantly luminous in the vault of the sky. They can be completely obscured by thick clouds, which prevents them from being seen. This parallels the way in which enlightenment, through present within, though present within you, is not apparent. Thick clouds vanish naturally when left alone in the sky. Wow, that one line right there is the secret to life. <laughs> Believe it or not, modern cognitive behavioral therapists did not invent the, the technique of leaving it alone. It's been around for a long time as a, a very hidden secret. Why for a long time we, we can't leave it alone? We just have to do stuff and we feel like we're on this kind of mission, right? That's okay. That's our cycles. That's cyclic existence. For whatever reason we get put in the washing machine um, but the fact is is that you can escape, escape it at some point many beings all beings uh, at some point be beings in this particular collective will get a choice they will see it wow now i can step out of this all these cycles or i can stay in them if you if you're confronted with that option you're very very lucky Mm -hmm. I think uh, people have to die to get that option. And they get it in the bardo or they have to be reborn. Because they have so much karmic momentum that in their own minds, they're desiring stuff so much or wanting money so much. And this propels them back into a life based on those karmic propensities. But once you step out of the clouds, out of the cyclo, cyclic kind of existence, and you enter the sky, well, then those cycles can exhaust themselves. And you've chosen freedom. You ate the red pill. <laughs> Okay, so similarly, the clouds of causality vanish without effort or striving, and the very essence of enlightenment shines in and of itself in the vault of the sky. Given the varying degrees of acumen, there are different spiritual approaches. The essence is like the sun, shining clearly in the expanse of the basic space of phenomena. Yeah, this clear light cognizance, what we call awareness, it permeates all phenomenon. All you need to really do is, is start to uh, detach yourself from the sense preoccupation where you're kind of, if I'm always focused on sense objects, I'm within the clear light. The clear light's always there, but like uh, I always like to quote Naguma, Naropa's sister, she says it's so close, you can't see it. Right. And it can be, I don't know if you've ever had a relationship or had a good situation that was really, really good and you just couldn't accept it. You just couldn't just let it be. You had to always... <laughs> Right. I don't think I need to elaborate on that. We probably all can relate to some degree. 
Well, the same as with awareness. Yeah, it's it's just so good and perfect, and we can't seem to let it be. Naguma also says that. So everything, uh, by the way, those are two of the four faults of the faults of awareness. So everything arises without bias due to its dynamic energy, which is like the sun's rays. Ah, very good uh, context there too. Whenever we compare our mind to the sun, well, are you located in the rays? Or are you in the basis of the sun? So how can, if you're habituated, programmed to be in the rays, in the energy of the sun, how could you ever come back home to that big ball of fire that's the basis? Well, the rays need to recognize heat because heat is the nature of the sun and it's in the rays and it's in the big ball of fire, and it's everywhere. So the rays recognize heat, and then all of a sudden, they're, they're able to come out of their obsession with being rays, and they're able to, to come home. And now they're the, the big ball of fire, and the rays, and the heat, all of it. So in this example, the big ball of fire would be the Dharmakaya, the heat would be the Sambhokakaya, the nature of your mind, and the rays would be the nirmanakaya, the display of your mind, okay? So, everything, I'll read it again. Everything arises without bias due to its dynamic energy, which is like the sun's rays. They suffuse the earth and bodies of water with warmth, so that a display of clouds arise, formed from water vapor. This obscures the essence itself and even its dynamic energy. Similarly, due to the impure display of natural dynamic energy deriving from the essence itself, one's perception of suchness, the heart essence, is obscured. The universe of appearances and possibilities consists of an inconceivable range of perceptions based on confusion. So stay there. Uh, a very important point there, it talks about how the clouds are created. Uh, if you could go back, uh, the sun actually helps uh, when it mingles with the water, it creates the clouds. So it's kind of referring to how we create our own clouds there. All right. So the dynamic energy of the sun's rays stirs the wind that disperses clouds. Similarly, with the realization of the very essence of being, its display is experienced as its adornment. Ha, isn't that wonderful? I just gave you that sun analogy, how the rays can all of a sudden become the basis of the sun. And it says here, the dynamic energy of the sun's rays stirs the wind that disperses clouds. Similarly, with the realization of the very essence of being, its display is experienced as its adornment. But they got the terminology wrong. It would all make perfect sense and weave together perfectly if they said, similarly, with the realization of the very nature of being, its, dis its essence is experienced. Or no, its display is experienced as adornment. There is just talking about phenomenon. But the thing about it, is when you recognize, let's go back to the sun analogy. If you recognize the heat, you also recognize the essence, which is emptiness. You're like, wow, I'm resting now in the basis, which in the sun is the big ball of fire. But in our case, our basis is everywhere and nowhere. Right? That's what emptiness is. That's what suchness is. But we do begin to see because we back out of the sense world and our sense preoccupation, we begin to see it, how it's a kind of expression or display or an empty appearance of our mind. Mm -hmm. So there's really just space like cognizance that has this expression of energy. Yeah. 
right? Hey, give, give me a moment. Um, so then the clouds being thoughts create the shadows, like the emotions that stir everything up, yet the shadows themselves are also still coming from the sun, which is creating the light <clears throat> to... Yeah, yeah, I think that's, uh, you can also look at it like that, yeah. Yeah, there's this kind of point that um, our mind creates its own obscurations. And then we get habituated into those obscurations. So let's continue reading. It says, confusion, which has always been free, is now free in its own place. Confused perception and reification are purified in basic space without having to be renounced. You have no idea where they have gone. The spontaneously present sun shines as the kayas and timeless awareness in the limpid sky. It does not come from somewhere else, but it is simply awareness's own pure manifestation. The wings of a Garuda unfold within the egg. As long as it is enveloped by the shell, this is not evident. But when the shell breaks, the Garuda soars into the vault of the sky. Similarly, although the contamination of confused dualistic thinking has already been resolved, when the shell, the result of this contamination, breaks, spontaneously present awareness immediately arises in and of itself, naturally lucid. The vast perspective of the Kaya's and timeless awareness fills the sky of basic space. All right. With recognition of the very essence of being comes freedom within the expanse of Samantabhadra. Okay, I think we can stop there. Well, our next sentence will be the display of responsiveness is immeasurable. Okay. Thank you, Yeshi, for accommodating that. All right, very good. Nothing like a nice dose of long chimba. 